A $10 spray gun that actually works? Are you serious? Hey guys, I'm Tim. Welcome to my shop. I'm going to talk about a spray gun that you can apply your finishes with that's only about $10 and actually works. So here it is. Here is the $10 spray gun that actually works. This spray gun I am completely surprised by is from Harbor Freight. You guys know I have a weird relationship with them because some of their tools work, some of them don't. This is actually one of the non-electronic spray guns and it works really good. This is a HVLP, which is high velocity, low pressure, has a pretty good size little storage reservoir for all your finishes. And I bought a regulator to put on the end of this so I can actually see what the pressure is at the gun a up close look of it is just a simple regulator also purchased at harbor freight so i used this on one project and i wasn't really sure how i was going to do and i didn't really film it or anything like that because i didn't want it to be a bust you know i had the china hutch project and i used an electronic spray gun from them to put on paint and it went horrible like I just ended up going buying a bunch of uh, cans of spray paint to use because that spray gun was complete shit. Sorry, but it was. It was. It was horrible. I used it for five minutes and it clogged up, and I couldn't even clean it to get it unclogged. All right, so here's your basic gun setup. Here is where the in air inlet is. Your air regulator that I bought. This is completely separate. So mainly you get this part right there that's all you usually get is just that that piece right there and you have your control of your flow right here this controls how much is actually going out here is your nozzle your trigger your flow pattern you can adjust that and then your reservoir this is also your air knobs that you can adjust some of the air regular but what i did with this is i opened this all the way up and I'm actually controlling it here. If you do it by here, you don't know what you're actually flowing into the gun. So I've just opened that all the way up and I actually regulate it through this knob right here. So when you first get this, you wanna take it completely apart as much as you can and clean it all with some mineral spirit. So I took this off of here. It has like a weird oil finish on it and you don't want to spray that because it'll actually ruin your project unless you're just playing around here is your locking ring right here so you undo that and this whole assembly pops off and then the next thing i do is just back here by your flow control and i take this off it's got a spring as you can see it's got a very good spring here is your flow control if you want to lock it down you would spin this all the way out and then tighten this piece up right here then it wouldn't go anywhere so then you have your spring and then your needle your fluid needle or whatever you want to call it i can't remember what they call it but that's what this is is a fluid needle i'm going to call it that so what you want to do is you want to clean this get that tip all cleaned out make sure your holes are all nice and clean see the holes right in there you got your fluid needle this will have a lot of oil on it because it's got the moving parts your spring doesn't have any oil and neither does your flow control for cleaning it they give you this little supplied brush right here nothing special at all but it does get down into this area right here to clean out that after each use and you can go around in the front and clean all these holes all those holes this back side right here does not need to be clean. You see that? That does not need to be clean because there's no fluid going through it. The fluid comes right from here and out. And as you can see, maybe, there is, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Let me try to get it in here so you guys can see it. There is a little hole down in there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but that's where the fluid needle goes and then it comes out into the tip. And as you move this in and out, it controls where this is going back and forth, allowing 
the amount of fluid out of that nozzle tip. So for reassembly is very simple. After you get it all clean, I always take a rag and wipe everything down. And then it is a simple reassembly you put on the front. Now look, this front can move. It goes vertical and horizontal. This spray will, can, will put the fluid up and down like that. This way puts it horizontal. So it's kind of opposite. It's kind of weird how that works. You have it in one direction and you would think, hey, it's gonna spray that direction, but no, it's the opposite. So when you have the tip horizontal, spray goes vertical and vice versa with the other way. So you can tighten it down and then you grab your needle find that little hole that's in there and then you got to put it in there now this is the tricky part is the spring because for some reason it always seems tight to me but that's good i really like how tight the spring is because that means that the spring is really strong and can have good flow control the way i do this is i put my thumb on the back of this and i compress that in and then you gotta work with it a little bit. This is probably the worst part about it is trying to get this back in. But I've learned that if you put your thumb on the back and push it in, it keeps pressure on that spring and then it's a whole lot easier to screw this in there. So like I said with this, if you wanted to get that amount of flow, you could tighten this down right there boom, it's not gonna move anywhere. So if you're working on like a car or a bigger project, you wanted the same consistent flow throughout the whole entire project, you could lock it down right there and it wouldn't ever move. And if you wanted the adjustment, you just back it out and you can screw it back in there. And the further you screw it in, the less flow you will actually have because obviously it's pushing the needle all the way up into the front. So here is a look at the very tip. You can see that black piece from earlier sticking out through this the little trip or the end of the nozzle you have your pattern control flow control it's very simple guys there's no there's no troubleshooting this all right guys i got it all hooked up and guess what we've got a bottle of water so we can test it i don't like spraying here in the shop but it's too windy outside to do anything so we're going to test it inside with some water and the basic thing you do is you take that off pour some water up in there at first when i first started using this it had a slight leak near the trigger but after the first time i haven't seen it leak at all anymore so that's good so now once that you have your water or your finish whatever inside now is the time Start spraying. All right, so like I said, guys, this is the flow control right here. So what you want to do is you want to open it up. You can give it a little bit of a test. I don't know if you guys can see that. All right, so now we have some fluid flowing out of it. So I just barely got it cracked open to where the fluid is coming out. And now we can start testing it. Guys, you always want to test this stuff on scrap material. Do not test it on your project when you begin, all right? So when you're going to use this, you don't want to just start on one side and work right to the other. Guys, your working pattern, instead of being this wide, is actually going to be about half a foot to a foot past it on either end. You never want to stop on a project. That's how you'll get runs, stuff like that. So when you want to start, you start over here, go across, back and forth. My flow is a little bit low right now, so you guys can't see it really, so we'll turn it away up. And that's that, it's very simple. All right, so when you're spraying, remember go past your project and you wanna overlap halfway on all your stuff. All right, so your spray pattern is this wide. Okay, so when you go to make your second pass, you want to cover from here to here. And then your third pass will be the next section down. It'll cover right here to right here. 
The reason why you overlap it is so that you blend the sections together. If you just did one section right here and then one section right here, this won't be as thick as that middle section right here. So you can come in, fade across, overlap half, and take three or four passes on this. All right, so we got your flow control or your pattern control right here, which is how expanded it is. So the less you got, the, the more of a fade or the more of a spray it goes. And then if you increase this, it's more of a direct shot. So here is the decrease. It's very, very light. And then here's your fully opened. It's very, very heavy. When you're doing it that way, it pushes a lot of fluid out all at one time. So you really have to be careful of runs and stuff like that. So that is the $10 spray gun that actually works. Guys, I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button. Do the video all around on all the social media. If you guys have tips, tricks, extra comments, things I did right, things I did wrong, Leave them in the comments below. I'd love to read them. I'd love to learn a little bit more. If you guys are new, hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit that bell to get notifications for when I post videos. As always, go back and look at all my other videos. There's blacksmithing, woodworking, some DIY stuff. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you on the next video.